I'm here on assignment tonight. This was something that the Lord called us a couple weeks ago. And as I saw Apostle on Saturday, it God does things in a way. Huh? My, 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 my grandmama would say he's mysterious. And if you're not careful, he'll sneak some stuff on you. And y'all with me, right? Because when we planned this, we did not know that it was going to land the day after Pentecost. Lord have mercy. And I don't know about you, but I had a refill yesterday. accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Move quickly beyond out the way. Let Jesus preach for you. If you don't do it, it will not be done. Uh, but let your will be done in this place. He will deliver set free. And God, let your glory be revealed in this place. Even the more, it is in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. If you need a word, I believe you got one tonight. Two verses, not going to bore you with reading. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Somebody done read it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. It is there that the Bible records these sayings. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Here it is for somebody that will catch it in, in the reading. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody can't hear what old and you gonna leave with new time. Tonight, if the Lord would give us preaching power, we would like to talk to you, we being me and the Holy Ghost, from the topic, a new thing. Simple, nothing really deep. Sit down, let me talk for a little bit, but a new thing. A new thing. Uh, June chapters, June number six, June six, here we are, 2022. Twenty-five days until the halfway mark of this year. COVID is still here. This disease has literally crippled our world, nearly bringing us to our knees, bringing many to death or the door of death. And if that was not enough, then we start to see this ray of sunshine. It's been up and down. We've had, every time you turn around, it's better than it's worse. It's always something. But when we think we all right, then we got to deal with the news. This, 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 we find communities crippled from the wrongful and unneeded mass shootings. We look over and there's always somebody dying. Can I talk? Amen to God. Next every time I get a phone call, there's not one day hardly that I don't get a phone call. Something is going on. God, I feel like preaching tonight. Uh, we ask ourselves now, where is God? Uh, why does it seem like God is not is not there? But can I stop here and put something out of my notes? But can I put a pause for a cause right here? It might seem like God is silent to you, but really what God wants to do is hear what you 
got to say. Too many times we're looking at God's silence, but God is listening for your silence. Come on. Hallelujah. Because we take time and we try to deal with things. But I remember Grandma growing up, some of him having a little talk with Jesus. Y'all remember? Tell him about your trouble. He'll hear your faith for cry. He'll answer by and by. And when you feel the proud will turn and you know the fire part of just a little talk with Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about here tonight? You know, make it all right. I got to let me work this text tonight. We find our text here in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the five major uh, prophetic writings. The Assyrian Empire has weakened and fell into the last quarter of the seventh century. Uh, Nineveh, its capital, was destroyed by the Midianites and uh, the Babylonians in the 612 BC. Go on, stay with me. I'm going somewhere. The Babylonians rapidly took over the Assyrian Empire, destroying Jerusalem and Judah for the conspiracy and rebellion which had been encouraged by the promise of Egyptian help. Uh, but with the death of Nebuchadnezzar, y'all know Nebuchadnezzar, don't you? Uh, Babylon's greatest king in 561 BC, however, this entire uh, in its turn began to rapidly weaken. And the Bible of God sent a word to the people of God, the people of Israel, telling them to prepare for something. Here it is. He begins to remind them of what he brought, what he did for them back in the land of Egypt. Uh, he parted the waters and allowed Israel to walk on dry ground. Then how he destroyed the Egyptian army. He begins to tell them this, but then he has something else to say. He said, forget about all that. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For it is nothing compared to what I'm about to do. And I, can I tell somebody that came here, amen, looking for a word from the Lord, here's your first word, what God is getting ready to do for you. It's not going to compare to what he's already done. Hallelujah. You have seen many victories, but this next victory is going to overshadow every victory you have already had. Tell somebody God's getting ready to do a new thing. Don't you know? Is there anybody here that don't mind? I hope y'all don't mind exercising. I feel like talking. I hope there's nobody that don't mind jumping on your feet and telling your neighbor God's getting ready to blow your mind. Come on, tell somebody this God's getting ready to blow your mind. If you believe it, clap your hands and give God something. Tells us, I'm going to take one verse and I'm only going to deal with verse 19 today. Uh, 19, he says, for I'm about to do a new thing. The prophet Isaiah relays to the children of Israel that God is getting ready to do a new thing. When reading the word of God, it is important to know that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. Therefore, it is good practice by any person that desire to know the word in his depth to look at the text in relation to its original language. Can someone say that? So in my study, I found the term at the time a new thing was derived from the word say kadosh. It literally means fresh. It literally means new thing. God was telling, hallelujah, the prophet Isaiah that what I'm getting ready to do is about to be fresh. Good God. It's not going to be stale or rotten or huge. But what I'm getting ready to do, no one could ever expect. Yeah. Uh, no one would even begin to even think about what he's going to do. Let me pause for another Do a new 
anything. I'm getting ready to flip the script. I'm getting ready to make some changes. I'm getting ready to do something you would never expect. I'm about to do something fresh and new. Then I ask God, why, hallelujah, why is it that you have to do something new? He says to me, it's because you are so used to me being one way. Lord have mercy. Doing things this one way. That you have allowed yourselves to put me in a box. Okay. I'm going to preach in a minute. You have certain expectations of me and now I must enact the element of surprise. I have to do something new just like I did to Elijah when he stood upon that mountain. Elijah, my time is fleeing. I got to quit but I, I wish I had time. He's working on a 
their way and tongues of fire rested in their mouth and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and hold up. Wait a minute. Because I'm going to tell you, we go off right there. But then they said, what's going on? I'm going somewhere. Uh -huh. If you can't dance, you better find something. I feel like having a dance right now. Skin. He said, it's going to go out. It ain't just for you, it's for your 